Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Developer Small Talk. It's been a while. Um, the last recording was in summer. We had a cold season here in Berlin, but now summer's back. It's right now 30 degrees outside. And with me is Adam, and I'm very excited to have him with me. So, hey Adam, how are you doing? What's up? Oh man, I'm happy. How about you? <laughs> I'm glad to see your face again. It's been since, uh, what was that, CSS Conf U? JS Conf U, I think, yeah. JS Conf on the last minute, we were the last people that were, were about to leave the venue, yeah. I guess. They were like, so who shooing us off with brooms they were like you're just dust on the ground now like could you leave here please and we're like no i'm having fun <laughs> yeah we, we got special treatment though we were allowed we to stay outside they started sweeping around us they were like they're not gonna move <laughs> <Let's> just... <laughs> yeah so adam who are, who are you oh i'm a css devrel at, on google chrome and i just love building stuff for the web and somehow got lucky in this role where i get to be excited uh, and get paid to be excited i'm and I love that. And I want to do right by this role and empower all those around me. And man, the web is just so cool right now. And just talking about it, that's what I do. I just love talking about it. I agree. And I love CSS too. So what, what do we want to talk about? Today we're talking about VizBug, which uh, is a tool inspired by Firebug, where I was like, hey, remember back when Firebug came out and we were like, oh, I can I can like toggle things Change on the stuff. DOM? and change stuff. It's like semi-visual, like what is this magic? Um, I wanted something just like that for designers where we uh, provide them with a toolbar that looks something like a toolbar and a design tool. And when they go to a web page, they can see that toolbar and make manipulations that are somewhat similar to uh, the world that they live in, which is you know typically X, Y coordinate land, but go uh, use similar techniques in flow land where the DOM is real, where constraints are real and, and give them some power there to manipulate production. Sounds too good to be true. Want to wanna kick it <laughs> off? <laughs> yeah, well, right, it is kind of too good to be true. One of my favorite things about it is like, you can go to a design tool like Webflow or Figma and use VizBug on those. Since it doesn't know inception. anything about the page, it's like Inception. It's, it's one of its superpowers is that it's dumb. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Cool. So what do I have to do to get it? So I would just Google VizBug, huh? Yeah. Well, I hope. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sitting up there in the end. <laughs> Looks good. So it's a, a Chrome extension, right? Yeah. Oh, Chrome you don't see my you don't see my screen yet, right? <laughs> I don't see your screen. I can imagine though what that Google result was like. So let's share entire screen. Here we go. You see yourself? Ooh, inception. I do. Cool. So here we have VizBug. Yes. Right. Tiny, so it's just I'm, a few kilobytes. Cool. So let's add that to Chrome. Dun, dun, dun. First question about this is, uh, does it work in Firefox too, using the um, extensions API or something? Can I make that work? It sh so um, I have an open bug with Firefox right now. The intent was to, this is just a custom element. So this bug really has no Chrome alliances or even dev, um, dev tool protocol usage. It's just using the platform. It's sort of looking at what you're hovering over and then reading properties off those DOM nodes. Oh, the, nice. uh, the custom element works in Firefox and Safari in the tech preview, but um, I had to get over a hump even with Chrome to put a custom element into a Chrome extension. Turns out I was like the first person to try putting a custom element. Anyway, um, Firefox, it's not very happy with me uh, instantiating an ES6 custom element class in the context of a add-on. And so mm -hmm. uh, I have open thread channels with the folks over there and I'd love to resolve it because there's no reason that this is stuck in Chrome. Um, and really it's also, you could NPM install it and stick it on your site manually if you wanted to. Um, I'm even sort of thinking today I could make a little bookmark script that just fetches the dependencies and then injects them in the page and give you like this little blob that you could run and, and you could yeah. use it without an extension. It's, it's a very agnostic tool, um, but to be very honest, it has one or two modern uses of things like CSS OM um, that are starting to make it deviate slightly from Firefox and Safari because it is using Got some future-facing Chrome things. There are things I could pull back if I wanted to, um, but they're very cool, and I'm just kind of getting greedy. So I don't know. We'll see where it, where it goes. But cool. So two questions about what, what you said. Is it on npm? It is. Uh, I don't think it's on npm yet. I, I intended to in the very beginning, um, but it's not yet. Hey, what's this bug lib? I like where that's going. 
Oh, it's like, cause I, I stole the real estate. So maybe somebody else installed it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay. And, 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 <laughs> and, and second questions for the, for people that don't know what the CSS arm is, what is that? Yeah. CSS, uh, object model. So we have traditionally you would get computed properties, uh, get computed styles off of an element, which is great. because you could say, Hey, I'm looking at this H1 get computed styles. What's the font size? And it would, and it would say, 40 picks and I'd be like, great. Okay. So that's 40 pixels. That's literally the computed, what it's currently being drawn at, but I didn't have easy access to the authored value. And I also subsequently didn't have very easy powers to say, well, what's one rem plus 40 pixels. And so the CSS right. object model is almost like a typed CSS model system that has really convenient ways to get values, put values and uh, calculate and manipulate manipulate values. It's a more powerful API for, um, yeah, computation. Fancy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. So I have this bug installed now and we're, I'm closing that and we are now on my site. So, and I already discovered this little tiny icon here, right? I assume I have to click it. Yep. And that'll just launch that pretty much just puts a custom element in your page. No way. So I have to reverse engineer a little bit here. Huh? Yeah, I, I hope that was fun. <laughs> I cover right. around and you'll see other things too because I, I append DOM nodes on the page. So right, that whole that whole illusion of you seeing layers and groups is yeah. um, SVG elements. So they're also custom elements. So one custom element is creating and puppeting other custom elements and really just using SVG to create the bounding box and the styles that look like what you're familiar uh, in a design tool. Nice. Can I disable this mode so that I can keep the toolbar, but enable and disabled? So you uh, you want to hide the toolbar, or what's the? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want yeah. to keep the toolbar, but remove disable the hovering for a second. Ah, so the hovering. Uh, let's see. Can you? I think if you hold Control, uh, it will hide the hovers, or maybe it's Alt. Um, something will let you sort of. Um, get more into the guidelines. Other tools don't have the hover. So you could try the style inspect tool. I think it's got less of a hover. Uh -huh. um, okay, so th these are different like uh, tools, like I know them from Photoshop or something. Yeah, yep. Okay, so what is it? Ooh. That's fancy, the style fancy. inspect tool. All right, want to guide me maybe from the top to the bottom and then I see what, what comes out? Yeah, and uh, while we chat about it, hover on it too, because you get a little um, demo in the GIF there and instructions on how to use it. Ooh, okay, let's start at the top. Guides, nice. The guides tool. So this is a traditional, uh, you're, I used to hold up paper to my screen and just check alignment just for, for a gut check. <laughs> I did um, the same. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so now you don't need to. This will create guides and if you click one and you hold shift, um, you can select many, and if you click one and where you hover next, it will show you distance. Oh, nice. So you can kind of um, continue measuring, continue taking distance measurements, and then go verify that things are spaced as you expect them to. And you can hit escape and blow it all away. Sweet. All right. Yeah, I guess that is all it, <laughs> all it comes to guides, huh? Yeah, and so this is kind of a good point to talk about. Uh, this bug has a very modal system in that it has modes, kind of like Vim. And so mm -hmm. when you're in the guides mode, everything about VizBug is about guides and measurements. And when you change your tool, the entire sort of like keyboard system and hotkey systems all change to the context of the tool, which I find allows it to scale without being overly complex. But we'll see. I don't know. You, you have to repeat that. I, I'm not sure I get the, the complete. OK, yeah, but uh, I see keyboard shortcuts here, right? Yeah, so there's lots of keyboard hover. shortcuts. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, I think we, we got these, right? Click hover, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Inspect. Inspect. So this is designers would often have a whole extension devoted to just, what font is that? Or, hey, is that the hex that I gave them or not? And so the style inspect tool is where I've sort of predetermined what are the most popular designer um, styles that they're interested in. So I'm trying to remove some cruft and then I surface them in this nice little hover inspect. So anything you hover over will read the computed properties off of there and tell you 
um, what you're looking at. And it gives you the opportunity to assess and decide if you need to make any changes and, and stuff like that. Nice. Uh, I see font sizes and pixels. I'm pretty sure that I'm not defining pixels and font sizes. Is that just so that it's uh, targeted for designers, yeah? That is exactly it. So yes, you can open the dev tools up and see the authored value. Um, and other design tools are, are very good at offering the authored values. And Vizbug is sort of, I, it, Vizbug wants to offer authored values at some point, but for now, um, the, the computed value is the, the value that I see as a designer, and I'm not maybe yeah. interested in the system that, that got me to 20 pixels. I'm just saying, no, in my mind, it should be five pixels more, uh, and so I'm going to go increase the font size or something like that. Yeah, that makes total sense. You can Me. change the colors, though. So if you um, if you notice all the colors here in HSL, that you can change. And so you can do that. Let's see if I remember right. You can just right click anywhere and go to the Vizbug uh, menu here and oh, change nice. the colors to your preference. Yeah. Uh, you can also do it by right clicking the icon up in the toolbar. But um, I find that right click context menu to be pretty handy. There's one more cool tip with the um, inspect tool, which is the ability if you hold option and click, yeah. you'll pin the style. And that will keep the card there. And that's important oh, nice. in case you've made changes or if you want to screenshot and, and sort of assess something. And this gives you the opportunity to pin them like a sticky and and do something with it share it this is very much like your your best share style it's like a i've gone and i've manipulated it uh and so that's a sort of small thing about the inspect tool is if you've changed something with Vizbug, the inspect tool will summarize that for you and we can kind of get into that later so it's like one of the ways you can get your work out is yeah. um, by going back to something you changed with the inspect tool and Vizbug will show you what you changed nice okay yeah. we'll see that then later right yeah yeah all right, so accessibility is next up. Yeah, so just like the style inspect tool, this oh, one you that is nice. And I and I just I pull all of the accessibility information that I can off of there and I present it to the user. Again, they're pinnable, so in case you find a bug, you can pin it and say yeah. um, there's something missing and yeah. The pinning stuff is really nice for reports, I have to say that. Thanks. Cool. Moving stuff around. Now it gets fancy. Uh, I'm not going to tell you anything about this one for now. I just want to watch you. Just try it. Yeah, see what happens. <laughs> oh, Click then drag. Right. The instructions. Very smart. <laughs> oh, you're close. It doesn't, doesn't work. Click first. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Wait. That one's not very movable. Um, try clicking the text above that. Uh, do a single click first. Ah, oh, so these all must be nested. There you go. OK, did you see how that had the handles? Yes, now you can uh, grab those and shift them around. Uh, how does it work? Why didn't, didn't it work before? Uh, there were no children to shift position with. Ah, uh, so, so it, way, it works for the parent, yeah? It's, yeah, so the way that the visual move tool works, where you can grab and move things around, is, uh, oh, yeah, look at that. You can change your whole columns around. Sometimes you have to wiggle them. Um, because it's using native HTML5 drag and drop, which can be a little sticky sometimes. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. that. Right? So the idea, though, is that you can move things laterally very easy. But if you want things to go up a parent or down into an element, that's done with the keyboard. So if you wanted to, um, yeah, exactly. So up and down. Up means go out of my node and into the parent node. And down will move you into the nearest sibling. Uh, and put you into that element, or create a group and, and make them uh, children inside of it. I see. So uh, up and down is quite dangerous, and left and right is very safe, uh, kind of in summary. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. How, um, how, can I now dis how can I click now my link here? <laughs> I wanted to go somewhere else to play yes. around with it. How <laughs> this is really important. I, well, it's not really important, but yeah, many nodes in a web page have multiple wrappers, right? And some of those wrappers don't have grabbable areas. So with Vizbug, if you can't directly click something, you can hold, uh, you can hit Shift Enter to select the parent element, and basically you can make selections with Enter and Shift Enter and Tab and Shift Tab. So you can move your selection uh, across all those. Uh, ah, exactly. So you can go in and out of the DOM oops. with the keyboard. Got it. 
Cool. Yep. And I find that to be really handy when uh, you're testing, if you are a, a sibling or if, yeah, a case where you've got a link that's shrink wrapped around a node, but I really wanted to select the link. Like how do I get to that thing? If it has no bounds, um, the keyboard will let you navigate and traverse the DOM uh, in any direction that you want to. So kind of cool. Nice. There's also another way too, which is the search bar there it, or the search icon. If you know what elements that you want, you can search for them by ID or by class name. Um, make sure there's a dot in front of it for if it's a class name. And then, uh, right, see how you inspected? You could have used the inspect tool to see what classes were on that element. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Fair and, point. Uh, and I'll show you some cool shortcuts. So uh, for example, it looks like you selected the headline if we yeah. go back to the style inspect tool and then click that element, you'll see that there's a little label above there. You see how it says headline one? Yeah, you yeah. see when you hover that? Now when you click that, it will go select all the other uh, O headline ones. All right, let's grab this one. Ah, wait, I did it again, wait. So inspect. Yeah, the, the dev tools muscle memory. <laughs> so <laughs> There you go. Now you've selected all the oh, buttons. That is handy. And that what is you can handy. do now is here's a fun thing. Hit F on your keyboard for the font tool. So that'll mm -hmm. switch you uh, over there. See how it says uh, TT now? And hit up on your keyboard to bump up the font size. Now you're increasing the font size of every button on your page in a couple of clicks. Nice. That's, I think that's pretty cool stuff. It's the ability to have multi select. So Visbug is very functional. Uh, programming mentality in that it will take your command, which is a manipulation or a side effect, and it will repeat the side effect for every child that you have selected. So multi-select becomes a very powerful attribute of this book. Cool stuff. All right. Want to move on? Sure. Margins. Yeah, I'm just going to watch you on this one. This one's a fun one. I cannot drag? <laughs> yeah, we can't drag yet. I'd like to add that feature. It's on my backlog. But you can change them, but it's all keyboard. All right, let's have a look. All right. Ah, this is actually changing right now? It is. Ah. And if you hold shift, you'll change it by units of 10. Ooh. So the way that it works is every arrow key is the side of the element. And when you press yeah. an arrow key, it will add to that side. If you hold Option or Alt and press an arrow key, it will remove from that side. And those are the basics of Visbug in this case. Good stuff. So padding is, I'm assuming, the same? Yeah. Padding is the exact same. What's really interesting, so what though, the margin tool is hold Shift and select many elements in your layout. Um, at least if they have margin, try to find ones that have margin because it starts to let you visualize the space that's happening between. You're like, where is the space between June 30th and the Node.js button? And you can hover over those and try to discover it. So it looks yeah. like we come at the bottom of the button. Yeah, where is that margin coming from? Perhaps it's padding then if we don't see it. And it's also, um, it's a flex layout, so it will always be the full height. Ah, nice. So there's a so, flex there's a flexbox tool too. Maybe we go to that one next. Yeah. <laughs> so this is yeah. <laughs> what a good transition here. <laughs> <laughs> and look, it's right underneath the padding tool. <laughs> oh my god. We didn't plan that. Um so let's see. Yeah, I think this was a flex container. Mm, can I see that with the inspect? Yep. You can. Here we go, right? Display flex column. Okay, what should the flex tool do? Uh, the flex tool, so the arrows um, will change alignment. And it looks like right now they're aligned top left. So if you hit down, it will align them into the vertical center. Ah, uh, see, the left and right will change their justify. Um, and then the way to change from column to row is hold command and hit down. Uh, or command and write, and you'll sort of force it into a row or force it into a column. Nice. Good stuff. So you really navigate or you use uh, Visbug really only with the keyboard? Yes, yeah. So I can talk about that really briefly. So there's two motivations for the keyboard. The first one was um, 
whenever I watch a, an expert designer, they pretty much don't leave the home row. Very similar to how an engineer won't leave the home row in an uh, IDE, where they can yeah. jump through their entire text and never really use the mouse. So I wanted to emulate um, those power gestures that a designer would do, because my favorite thing, and I love doing this impression, which is I'd go up to a designer at their desk, and they're in the zone, and I tap on their shoulder, and they'd go one second, and they would like select a few things, and then nudge, nudge, nudge. They'd select yeah. some more, <laughs> nudge, nudge. select, select, nudge, 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 hotkey, hotkey, nudge, hotkey, nudge, hotkey, and I'm like, dude, this is amazing. <laughs> like, look at them. Go. What did you just do? What did you just do? So I wanted to give them similar powers. To, to that, basically I went power user first. So instead of creating a bunch of panels that are very traditional, um, I went straight for the hotkeys because the hotkeys let me move really quickly. And yeah. so um, value number two of Visbug is Visbug, as you saw in the move tool and the margin and padding tool, what I want to do is not give you a box with four options for padding. I want to yeah. give you dedicated tooling that's embedded and goes the next step. So while I don't have some of the basics of panels now, what I want to do is have advanced, very convenient visual tooling um, to come out next. So I'm gonna kind of jump skip. We'll have, uh, anyway, so that's the plan. That's why there's no uh, kind of traditional panels now. And that's why it's so hotkey driven is I wanted to, yeah. anyway, I think I explained it. <laughs> no, I'm just rambling. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 I think it makes sense. The shortcode for the for the commands is this little um, character in the circle, right, in pink there. Yep. Yeah. So A is the the uh, flexbox align tool. Yeah. Got that. Cool. It's colors. Where do I yeah, have colors? Yeah, here's your tool. I love this tool. So here, select your background there. And so, real quick, if you see underneath the tool palette, that you have A. Uh, there's a paint bucket icon, and then a border icon. Even further underneath that, so underneath the search icon, there's three buttons there. Yeah. Those are color, background color, and border color. And you can click them and choose a color visually using the HTML5 color input. Ooh. Ooh, right? I'm writing inline CSS styles. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, let's I, talk I see about, any, Yeah, okay. Let's talk about the hue shift tool. And the hue shift tool is interesting because so in that case you didn't have a border to change the color. Uh, okay, same scenario with the arrows on your keyboard, but some arrows change the saturation and some change the uh, actual hue, and you're able to change a color to any color in the entire spectrum right from your keyboard, including manipulating opacity. How do so, I pick if it's uh, text color, background color, or border color? That's a great question. Oh, is that not even in the instructions there? <gasps> we just found a bug. We just, it's not a bug, it's like a bad instruction. So the bracket keys, left bracket and right bracket will allow you to choose which you're manipulating with the hue shift tool. I love it. Wait. I'll just make a quick pick. note. Awesome. So yeah, if you select this buddy that, here. Now, left arrow, right arrow. Oh no, I'm in a, in a different mode. I have a cursor here. Oh, you, um, double clicking will give you the text edit. So anything that you double click, you can just start changing the text of. And that's see, you have a pencil icon now in there. So it's like a quick way to get to the pencil icon and to, to try out new copy or to change something. Okay, but here is still the color thing is activated, isn't it? Thing. Yeah, it's activated again now. So yeah, click your button there. This one? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, look, we're kind of in a sticky text edit, aren't we? Yeah. Refresh. Refresh. So content editable has been a tricky thing. Um, it's usually very dependable, but... All right, so now that you have something selected and you have the hue shift tool, hit shift and up and down or shift and left and right to change values by 10 and you'll add white or remove white or you'll add uh, saturation or remove saturation. Okay, I don't get that to work. Huh. It looks like it's trying to change the color. So I click that, up arrow, If you deselect click, it. Yeah, try clicking the brackets. I'm curious if there's like a selection issue here. 
like on my side in the tool. I also yeah. have some um, focus management in the site, so maybe I'm messing with you here. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that might be an interesting use case. I'm going to visit your site as well and um, see if it's something that I can um, figure out real quickly. Yeah. So launch this bug, click a title color, go to the hue shift tool. Oh, yeah, see, I'm seeing different results on my screen. Of course. All right. Because um, when I click, I see a pink ring around the text color, the A icon there. Yeah, I don't. Very interesting. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Well, if we'll file your bug report here. We'll file a bug report. So um, the, the Hue Shift tool is supposed to be a quick way for you to change colors with, with the keyboard. So you can be like, oh, I just want slightly darker. And you can hit up yeah. on the arrow keys to add a little bit of black and yeah. vice versa. All right, shadows. Yeah, the shadow tool. Yeah, add one to that. Oh, look, you still have text edit. Um, well, that's so kind I of just to jump through. So I just click it, right? So what was it? That was box shadow. No. Yeah, the sun. So I click it once, and click I press one, down. And you press down, and there's a uh -huh. box shadow. And if you hold uh, shift and do left and right, you'll change the spread and the blur. All right, what else is in there? Uh, hold shift and change and hold option and change. Option is what I'm looking for. So that one's nice. spread and there's blur. And then if you hold command, you'll change opacity so you can make it darker or lighter. Oh, now it's inset or not inset. Oh, I can't remember, is command inset? Yeah, some of the hotkeys are a little tricky to remember. Cool. So then we have positioning. Yeah, this that position tool lets you just not care about flow. Click something and then click and drag it around. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> nice. This is like your escape hatches designer. You're like, oh, I'm looking at the website and the icon and the button fell below because I'm in a responsive scenario. I'm just going to go yeah. ahead and add some padding to that button, grab that icon and stick it over here and go, that's how it's supposed to look, developer. Screenshot it and ship it. And <laughs> then I go here, right, do this. And what was the sticky pass? No, it was like that. Oh, how the could I stick that? How could I make that stick? What was it? Oh, yeah, you're right. It's hold option, option click. click make, it, make it sticky. But look, it's not showing your change in position. Ah, interesting. There I totally go. I love it. So I'm your many. QA engineer here. Uh, no, right. this is so fun. Position tools, not reporting changes. Love it. And that's cool. That, what, yeah. Go for it. Oh, I, uh, the reason is that my the change detection is also linked to the desirable um, properties that uh, I think a designer wants to see. And I must not yeah. have left and top in there. So all I have to do is go add them, and it's a solved bug. Go for it. So we have position, then we have the final ones. Yeah, this one's yeah. fun. So here's a good one, a good uh, task to do. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I think that's cool. A fun task with this one. So click your um, uh, uh, something more specific, like the monthly digest June 2019 headline. Yeah. Oh, oh, look, my typography tool doesn't show you the labels. Oh, here's a fun one. Uh, hit Command E to expand your selection. This will find other elements on the page with the same uh, elements. Oh, Come. another. So that one's doing content editable. That would be it's adding italic. Yeah, I'm Command. jumping into the. Into another text edit mode. Yeah. Interesting. So the goal was to be uh, you can select a header, then get all the headers and change all their font sizes at the same time in just a couple of keystrokes. Yeah, I'm jumping, jumping into. That's funny. It's applying bold. Like if you did Command B, it would probably bold and unbold. It's very bold. Let's take this one. Yeah. 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 We have some sticky content editable. Uh, I'll have to check out what's going on. Cool. I'm going to use your website as a little bit of a test bed to fix it. Yeah. Of go for it. And then we have <laughs> text editable, which I'm using all the time already. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Solve that. Cool. 
Well, wait, we're not done. The search bar has cool little goodies hidden in there. So we talked Show about how you can search for class names and other things, but try typing just the word text. Try typing images. So those are aliases where I'll go find the matches for you. Oh, look, that one. Oh, there we go. Okay, it was a, a tough query. There's also, if you delete your uh, entry there and then hit that drop down image, you'll get suggestions for plugins. Um, click barrel roll up there at the top. Classic. Classic barrel roll. So there's also other <laughs> um, try trashy or wireframe or skeleton. They're really fun. So Trashy just put uh, outlines on your elements and will tell you accessibility issues that you have and let you know if things are too nested. It kind of gives you a quick outline. Look at how clean your markup is. That's phenomenal. <laughs> That's very beautiful. Well done. Well, thank you. Um, how can I write a plugin? Is it a pull request to the repository? Or? It is a pull request, and it's very simple. Yeah, we can go look it up on GitHub. There are ES6 functions that I call async. And uh, I give you the selection, so what the elements are that are is selected. It this one? No, it is. Uh, no, uh, V I S B U G. This V I S. Yeah, it's very common. Yep, and then uh, go to the, the wiki, or you can just go read a plugin. So if you go to um, app and then plugins. Nice. I'm totally sold on that idea. Wait a second. To do app. Nice. They're very easy to write. So yeah, you basically just um, you register what commands you want so that someone types into search slash something. And then I'll call your exported asynchronous function with the selected elements. And then you get access to the full DOM and the full power of ES6 and JavaScript to manipulate the page and do what yeah. your plugin said it would do. This one here shuffles children. It's very cool. You can select a parent element and just shuffle, shuffle, shuffle repeatedly, discovering new layouts and new uh, information architectures. So how does it work now? Shuffle and I decide on a parent? Yeah, so make sure you have a parent selected. So like, click the element that's holding all of your um, uh, kind of like blog posts. Clean that up. So yeah, try there. And then in the search, do slash shuffle, and that's it. As you finish the word, it will shuffle the children. Oh, if maybe there was nothing to shuffle. Oh, the selection was gone. There you go. So just delete the E and then write the E again, and it'll re redo the command. Hmm. Let me see if I can do it on your website. I wonder if that parent just doesn't have the children we think it does. Yeah, it could be. It's probably a list here. We have oh, to nope, it works for me. <laughs> oh, but, oh, wait, wait, wait. It's only two children. So that's why it's hard. Is it sometimes shuffling, but. Um... I see. I see. Yeah. Now it works here too. <laughs> okay. So here's what I did that made it really fun is I selected yes. I selected your monthly digest text there, June 2019. I hit yeah. shift enter once. Shift. Enter. Oh, make sure your cursor focus is in the uh, DOM there. So hit Shift Enter to go up. I'm oh. pressing the link. Yeah, your browser is not, uh, my code is not able to steal events from your browser very well. I wonder if it's a plugin conflict. So yeah, hit Shift Enter. There you go. OK, so you hit it too many times, but that's OK. Hit Enter to go back in. Yeah. And hit Tab. Uh, or here, yeah, hit tab now so that you go to the, um, there you go, now run your shuffle command. So what we did is we traversed the DOM to get to the parent of those posts, and now yeah. you can shuffle them. Got it. Yeah, so yeah, sometimes. I wonder if I have some extension going that is kind of messing a little bit. I don't know, I'll have to check it out, because those, those looked quite annoying to have keyboard commands uh, not be consumed by BizBug. This bug. That is a struggle of this bug is that I need to compete with all the other events on the page. Um, yeah. And some, some things I can't steal. And it's a limitation yeah. of this bug at this point. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, you have to make it work everywhere, right? Yeah. Cool. Anything else?
oh, that's pretty much it. Um, it. What happens is, is once you learn some of these primitives, uh, you can get a surprising amount of work done in a short amount of time. So Visbug's primary objective here is to be more like dev tools than it is a design tool. And that's why things are ephemeral. And that's why it edits what it sees. Instead of giving you tools to draw boxes, it gives you tools to edit boxes. And so it's very much a um, an inspect and hack tool than it is a tool that you would use to start fresh. Uh, it's very good for working against prototypes uh, when you're doing user testing. It's very good for editing production. Like here's a fun thing yep. you can do too, is if you right click, you can use Google to translate a page to another language. Oh, look, I don't see it on yours. Try right clicking somewhere else. Sometimes uh, Chrome shows you certain contexts. Yeah, translate. And then you can choose the language here. And now you can use production. Uh, I'll see change languages. Uh, you mean just um, to check how it would flow in different languages? The how text it and all flow that in different languages. And then you can use mm. that state as a design state. So it's kind of fun that. Got it. Yeah. 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 Cool. I mean, the fact that someone non technical can get, go in here and do this and kind of change already a little bit is already a huge help, right? I mean, you cannot tell a designer to open inspect element, make your way through the DOM and double click something. <laughs> right. Editing text is kind of a joke in the dev tools. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, I, I think that was, was nice. So let me see where are we? Here we are. Good stuff. Thanks for that. You're a great person to help drive around. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> we found some bugs. I'm very happy. I will check out the plugins. If, if people want to uh, check out Visbug or talk about CSS or want to um, be the last person on a conference outside, um, how can people <laughs> re re reach out to you? Yeah, Twitter is a fantastic spot. I'm Argyle Inc. on Twitter, and the ink is I N K, like you are. Uh, anyway, Argyle Inc. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we talk on Twitter, I bet, in the future. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. My pleasure. This is fun.